Hello everybody and welcome to another shader graph tutorial. In this tutorial we are going to look at this fractured portal shader in which uh, you can see you have the effect slider which um, exposes the portal. Uh, you can choose to change how much refraction each one of these are, are doing the random position as well as how much rotation. So let's just jump into it. Um, before we go to the shader, actually, I'm going to show you um, that these are two planes. Uh, one is a normal plane. I created both of them in uh, Blender. So you can just create add mesh plane. And then uh, you go to the particles or the part particle system, you create a particle system, keep it as it is, just click uh, play. And then I used the cell fracture add on, you just have to enable it if it's not enabled. Um, with own particles, uh, 100 pieces, you can make more than 100 pieces if you want. Um, and then what I did was to just scale all of these uh, pieces that are resulted from uh, the fracture. Uh, I scaled them um, on the individual origin so that they uh, intersect with each other so that the uh, plane behind them does not show up when uh, the portal is closed, right? And so we have these pieces and we have this is our portal plane and we have in front of that our fractured pieces. Uh, you have to know that these are not going to show any transparent object behind them because they are using the scene color. Uh, you can set up a, a second camera which render, renders to a, um, a render texture and then you can use that. Um, that might work uh, for uh, having transparent objects behind these uh, fractured uh, pieces. All right, so we have two shaders. One is very uh, simple for the the space, uh, which is uh, this guy. Uh, all what it does is it uh, takes a texture 2D and then sample that texture based on the UV added uh, to it a view direction multiplied by a parameter for how much parallax you want. We just add these two together and use that as the UV and uh, it's an unlit shader and it has to be um, transparent, right? Uh, the second thing that I had to do was the material has to have a sorting priority less than the fractured uh, pieces material. For the fractured pieces shader, it's uh, it looks a bit like this. Save that, but I'm gonna uh, go away anyways. So let's uh, dig into this a little bit. Um, first of all, this piece here is for calculating each piece, how far it is from um, a point parameter. A vector 3 right and that's going to be the center of the portal you have to set it manually in the inspector um, so you get the position of uh, from the object so that's the position of the object not the uh, vertex position and you get the distance between this and the uh, um, the vector 3 center you subtract the distance uh, from your effect value and then you divide that by the same effect value so that you get um, a value between uh, almost between zero and one. Uh, just to make sure I pass it through a saturate node which would limit it between zero and one. And then we can use this value to kind of lerp <coughs> or affect each one of the other um, effects, the position, the refraction and the rotation. So for the refraction, uh, as I mentioned, this uses the scene color. 
and then we have the screen position added to it a value. This value is what makes a fake refraction. Uh, and so what I'm doing is I am multiplying a refraction, uh, which is a float parameter, by the same uh, value I'm getting out of rotation so that uh, each piece um, gets more refracted refraction when it is ref uh, uh, rotated more. And then uh, I'm just multiplying that by our effect value and then again adding it to the UV of the screen position. Uh, going to the, um, the rotation piece, which is this one, um, I'm taking our position of the piece as the seed for a random range value. I'm just adding any value so that it has a different seed from the other ones. Um, the value is between minus one and one, and then you multiply it by your rotation float parameter, <coughs> and then you uh, uh, multiply the resulting random value by uh, the output of your effect and so that it lerps between zero and whatever this random value is. Um, and then you can connect that to the rotation of a rotate about axis node. The input is gonna be your uh, position in object space, and then the axis, you can play with that um, to, to, to see if you, you can even put it as a, a parameter, but yeah. And then uh, here we have, uh, as a result of this, we have our rotated pieces. And then after that, we are going to add uh, some random position as well as uh, this piece, which is uh, not really random. It's it's uh, throwing each piece far away from the center. So what I'm doing is subtracting uh, the center of the portal from the object of each piece, uh, which gives us a vector outwards, like from the center outwards. Uh, and then I'm multiplying it by this small value. And then we can add some random value to that so that they just they don't just go outside, but they, they go somewhere a bit random. Um, and then random is um, I'm adding a value to position using that as the seed. This is a subgraph which uh, looks like this. It basically takes the seed and creates three random ranges with different uh, seeds all of them between minus one and one, and outputting all of that as a vector three, right? So this takes a seed and outputs a, a random vector three, multiplying that by the position parameter, and then adding that to our uh, vector, which throws the, uh, the, the, the fraction or the uh, piece outside. And then you can multiply that again by your effect value, so that it lerps from zero to whatever this random value is, and then you can add this position to your rotated piece, and that's your uh, position, right? And uh, that's pretty much it. You will end up with something like this. As I mentioned, this center has to be set manually by the center of this, this position, basically. It's the center of the portal. Right. You can even, uh, if you move this, you can see how the center changes because, well, the center is, is here, but we are moving the, the object and yeah, the center is here. Yeah, so that's going to be it for this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and uh, consider subscribing and have a nice one.